Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambeau channel. What will the price of XRP be after this bubble that is inflating right now uh, gets to its peak and ultimately pops? And to be clear, look, I don't think we're anywhere near the, the peak of it, structurally at least. I don't know what the timeline's gonna look like, but in terms of structure, uh, it looks to me like there's a way to go, ways to go. Uh, but it will happen, and just like the past, it will pop, and XRP price will crash, but that's not unique to XRP. That's true of Bitcoin and every other cryptocurrency within the asset class, and it seems like an undeniable truth to me that this will happen again. So then the question becomes, what's that going to be? Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, this is a fun conversation to me, but I'll, I'll even tell you here at the outset because I don't want to tease it too much, but... I think that even if you see like a 90% drop, 80, 90% drop of XRP, whatever its, its peak ends up being, I still think after that drop, and this is a for fun guess, mind you, this is not a, like, I'm not making an actual price prediction, I don't do that, but um, I suspect that uh, the price of XRP, whatever it drops to, whether it's 80, 90% down, whatever it ends up being, I suspect it's going to be a good bit higher than the current price we see now, which is another interesting way of saying, the pricing that we have now, I don't think you're going to see it ever again after the bubble pops. And then that's a for fun guess. I, I, happy to acknowledge I could be wrong. But just in looking at how things behaved in the past, I don't think it's too unreasonable to suspect that's the case. And, um, and I'll, I'll explain why in this video. While also highlighting that there are some people that I just think are living in La La Land. Uh, thinking that, no, this time's different. Uh, famous last words. This time's different, guys. And, um, and and this time, you know, we're going to see the inflation, but we're not going to see the bubble pop. It's, it's just going to be up and up and up. Uh, you know, it, it, maybe you see a correction. You'll see a little bit of correction, but the bubble's not going to pop. And so the reason I say, I, I, I kind of roll my eyes when people say this time's different is because <clears throat> typically when, when that's stated, there's functionally like nothing that has really changed in terms of the way that market participants buy and sell the sell assets, in this case, it's cryptocurrencies. And so, given that they're verifiably behaving the same, what the hell makes you think that there that there you know there isn't going to be some sort of massive correction after there's just way too much money flooding into an asset, you know? Because I, I'll, I'll say this too: look, I, like a good chart analyst could tell you if if uh, any asset, without knowing what the asset is, without having numbers attached to a chart, a good a good chart analyst could look at the structure of a bubble. And not only what it doesn't say, oh yeah, that's a bubble. Now what happens? Bubbles pop. Every time. <laughs> oh, look, to be clear, I don't have a financial background of any kind. I'm not offering financial advice and you should not buy or sell anything because I say I write. I'm just an enthusiast making YouTube videos as a fun hobby. Um, you know, about Ripple and XRP and crypto and that's all that's going on here. So first, before we even get to what XRP might draw down to... Let's talk about how high it actually might go, which is another fun aspect of this conversation. Um, now, this will be led by Bitcoin, so we got to talk about Bitcoin too, but take a look at this headline from the Daily Huddle. Bitcoin will shatter $300,000 this cycle, says top trader Michael Vandepop. Here's why. $300,000. Now, look, you know me, right? I, If not, hi, I'm Moon Nambo. Nice to meet you. But I believe that, uh, you know... $300,000 Bitcoin. Uh, I, I, while I'm not, I'm not necessarily um, convinced it's going to happen, I would love to see that. I would really love to see. And it might. I acknowledge it might. I'm just, the higher the price, you know, um, prediction you make or, or expectation you share with me, the less confident I become that it's actually going to happen, which I think makes logical sense. But check this out. Prominent crypto trader and strategist Michael Vandepop is revealing his bold prediction, uh, Bitcoin uh, Bitcoin top prediction. Sorry, I don't know why three words in a row were like hard for me. <sighs> Unsubscribe! Anyway, in a new video, Vandepop discusses the ebbs and flows of a crypto bull cycle, explaining why right now is a dangerous time to bet on a bear market. And here's a quote. If you want to bet on a bear market, you're betting on something that's happening not too often. If you do that, you're betting against the general trend of the market. I'm quite sure that we are in a bull cycle and betting on a bear market is really complicated to do, especially in a market where the US dollar is losing value over time. I think the bet that you want to be involved in is crypto 
And I think the bet is is uh, you want to also be involved in altcoins. Yeah, and, and so in a, a general sense that, uh, that you know, I, I, would, I would say I agree with that. Um, you know, cause it, and I know it gets scary, too, because it's like, okay, well, you don't want to bet against it, but then if you hold too long, then you're in bear territory after a bubble pops. That can be scary, too. So it's like, okay, uh, how do we know when the top is actually in? And that's the million-dollar question, isn't it? Well, and, and that's why for me, I'm looking at not a, not specific price targets and not a specific timeline. I'm just looking at structurally, how's the chart going to look? And this is, mind you, again, this is coming from somebody who is not a chart analyst. I'm not pretending to be. Um, it's just we're all adults making our own adult decisions out here, investing in crypto if we so choose. And even as non-professional investors and or traders, we still have to make these decisions. And so I'm just sharing with you what I'm doing. Uh, because I think it's fun to talk about this stuff, and that's what I'm going to try and do, and we'll see how sloppy it goes. <laughs> but um, but that, that's that's going to be what uh, what my attempt is here. Anyway, peace continues. Van de Pop reasons that as the U.S. dollar continues to be devalued and institutional money flows into the flagship cryptocurrency, uh, eating into Bitcoin supply, the bull market will march on, taking the price of Bitcoin all the way to six digits. And here's a quote. Given the fact that institutional money and more adoption, and there are more options to buy Bitcoin, for instance, uh, this week we had Coinbase accept PayPal orders for Bitcoin. The more that is happening, the heavier the supply shock is going to happen for Bitcoin, which means there is so much demand right now that it will push the price up there uh, as there is less supply on the market. You can see that the amount of Bitcoin is dropping heavily, as it is going into hardware wallets and into investment purposes. And so look, let me pause right there. Uh, there's a reason I'm willing to entertain this concept. This is the first institutionally driven bull run we've seen in the history of the SASA class. I think you can make a strong case for that. Even though that's the case, though, are, are we confident that it's there's going to be enough money continuing to come in to push it up to these types of levels that uh, Michael Vandepop's talking about here? I hope so. That would be fantastic. I'm not quite necessarily sold on it, but in order for something like that to happen, wouldn't you need a strong continuation? And is there enough? I'm just not sure there's enough uh, compelling evidence. That's why you get so many varying opinions uh, on this. Like, uh, I mean, it's pretty normal to see somebody predict one to two hundred thousand dollar Bitcoin, but when you start getting up to the levels he's talking about, uh, fewer, fewer and fewer people. So here's the rest of his quote: Are we going with Bitcoin towards three hundred thousand or five hundred thousand dollars? I guess we will, because if you look at the valuation of gold at this stage, it's about $12 trillion. If you calculate that for Bitcoin at this stage, it's already about $500,000 that we're going to hit. So if we are going to have a top this cycle for Bitcoin, um, uh, I guess it's going to be above $250,000 and closer to $350,000 to $450,000. And I guess it will also be longer than this year. I guess we will have more substantial sideways periods, which I'd be fine with too. I know they're not as exciting, but if we need to have stronger sideways periods that you can see a bigger burst upwards, which is historically how things go, wouldn't mind seeing that one bit. Um, and there are other analysts, like for instance, uh, I have the recent tweet from, a somewhat recent tweet, I guess just from a couple weeks ago, from uh, chart analyst Magic, who wrote uh, that he thinks the top for Bitcoin is going to be more like seventy to 85000 That's also in line with what the blockchain backer, another very popular chart analyst you may be familiar with, says. Uh, his prediction, his best guess, is seventy dollars to $80,000 top for Bitcoin. Now this matters because XRP and Ethereum and name your altcoin, they're all following in a general sense the price action of Bitcoin. So if Bitcoin has a much higher um, price than, than uh, those types of levels, oh, then I, I suspect that XRP will too. But either way, you know, there's going to be some sort of correction. So the question then becomes, how low is, are things going to go? Uh, well, XRP community member XRP Euphoria uh, tweeted out the following. If XRP hits ten to thirteen dollars as a high this cycle, what do you see as the range it pulls back to in the next bear market? And uh, so, Credible Crypto responded with the following: a very popular chart analyst. Let's see how many followers he's up to now. He's oh, it's crazy. Growing like well deserved, growing like crazy. One hundred and seventy-seven thousand four hundred followers on Twitter. Whew. Anyway, <clears throat> here's his answer as far as how low XRP is going to go. No lower than prior all-time high, at least uh, um, uh, at three... Uh, let me restart that. I butchered it. No lower than three... I butchered it again. 
Third time's the charm, guys. There is science behind that. No lower than prior all-time high, at least 350 ish uh, May not make it as low as $4. Smiley face. And so it, it does depend on how high it goes, but that's why I was saying at the beginning of the video, the price levels we, we see now, while they look expensive compared to where XRP was several months ago when it bottomed out around 17 cents after the scary SEC news, uh, it, it's going to look uh, pretty good after this market cycle is done, if credible crypto is correct. And I suspect in general since he is, because bubbles are bubbles. We know We know what bubble formations look like on charts. We know what happens as that formation completes. And so if you think that you're going to get the first formation of that, uh, of that chart, uh, which, which does mean, that does mean overbought, uh, if you think you're not going to get the second half of that equation, I just, it, you're wrong. <laughs> like, like that, that is not how this works. Um, and so what if, what if Credible Crypto is right? Because he also stated uh, that he thinks XRP is mo most likely to go to, uh, to $20 to, to $30 right now. Well, my gosh, if you're if you're talking about thirty dollar XRP, you know even if even if there's like an eighty percent pullback, what's that six bucks? And that would and by the way, you know the lows are typically somewhat short lived, so it's not like it's going to be hanging out down there necessarily. And it's that's why it's so interesting. Like in the early days of XRP, you'd see it regularly trade by fractions of a penny, and then as a, as more liquidity flowed in, the, the price would rise and it would trade trade uh, regularly in the span of pennies. And then, uh, then, this, then it would trade within the realm of like dimes. Well, next market cycle, it's probably, I suspect, uh, somewhat regularly going to be trading within the realm of dollars. You know, uh, just a natural progression, just like you used to. The same thing, the same concept as with Bitcoin when you see it traded within a range of pennies and then ultimately, uh, you know, dollars and then hundreds and so on and so forth. Um, and so. Given that I feel extremely confident that there will be a bubble forming and popping, I shared the following two tweets. I'll read them back to back. Amazing there are people that don't think the crypto market bubble will ever again inflate to the point that it ends up popping and market drops 70% to 90% plus. I've had people tell me XRP will only drop 20% to 30% when the market corrects. Uh, XRP dropped... Over 50% last week. <laughs> People are behaving with the same reckless disregard they did last market cycle. Uh, utility still doesn't matter to pretty much anyone buying crypto today, but the market is now somehow magically impervious to such large price corrections? No, that's silly. <laughs> that doesn't make any... I'm not, just to illustrate the point here, let's go over the last 30-day chart. Um, you can see its most recent low, and this is what, a little over a week ago? Uh, I think, am I pulling up the right one? So that was $1 on uh, April 25th. Now, um, it actually did drop below that, though. It was, what did it get down to? It, it wicks, wicked below $1, so it may have closed right at $1. I don't know that, I don't think it closed below $1 ever, but I think it wicked down to like 91 cents. And, you know, look up here, within the last 30 days, $1.98. I think at some point, and it may have just been a wick above, but I, the XRP was above 200 bucks. Uh, not a 200 bucks, I'm sorry, $2. $2. Um, and so, look at how much it, the price went down. Like, in, in that short of a time span, it went down like over 50%. And you think we're not going to see even that again? Like, we, we just had that. I've seen, I'm seeing people write this stuff to me. And I just think like they've lost their ever-loving minds. <laughs> this is this is not how things work. Let me show you an all-time chart here. Okay, this is the all-time chart of XRP, and this this cool-looking formation right here, the spiky-looking guy. This is the greatest um, uh, price action we've ever seen with it with an XRP. This is when it ran from twenty-something cents to almost four dollars in the span of about two and a half weeks. It just there's a parabolic movement, just like straight up, straight up, insanely up. And um, that, that means that it was clearly overbought. These are inflated pricing. This, there's euphoria behind all of this happening. And so, of course, ultimately, uh, that, that XRP bubble did pop and it went down substantially. And ultimately, you saw lows of like 11 cents in March of last year. Think about that. From almost $4 down to 11 cents. Okay? We know that. And so, again, like, humans are behaving the same as last market cycle. Why would you think this wouldn't happen? I mean, look, look at this. Here's Bitcoin. Okay, this little, this this little, this is the all-time Bitcoin chart. So where I'm circling right now, this is the same run-up at the same time that XRP ran up, and um, 
it looks like nothing right now because Bitcoin's been running up since then. If you pull up this same chart um, without the most recent price action, though, it looks just as big and incredible as XRP. Well, just about. To, I mean, XRP um, did have more legs. Like, I mean, it wildly outperformed during the, its crazy run-up. But structurally, it's it's the same damn thing. Like, it was just parabolic movement, clearly a bubble. And so for, for you to think that you're going to have the first half of that chart formation... Um, which again, chart analysts can identify without knowing what it is. They just know that that's a bubble every time. If you think you can get the first part of that without the second part of it, you're wrong. Like it's it's going to. And so we had. So if you don't think we're going to have a pullback like that, the only way I would say you're correct is if you agree that we're not going to have a bubble form in the first place. Because that just like by definition, like it's it's not a bubble if it's not that. And so if we're not going to have that type of euphoria in people over buying, okay, but we are. You know, humans are behaving the same. People still are, don't know what that... Think about this, guys. And uh, this is not, nothing against Dogecoin. Uh, it's a funny, silly meme coin. I'm sure some of you listening hold it. Fine, have fun with it. Whatever. Make some profits. I hope you do well. But it's a meme coin. It was started as a joke. And it's like number five in market cap as I record this out of over like 8,000 coins, isn't it? Let me see where it is now. It's probably around... Yeah, it's number five in market cap. Is that a joke? Like, <laughs> it doesn't do anything. It does not do anything. So unless some weird adoption comes in in the future, it's never going to stay in the top 10. So unless something magically happens, okay, fine if it does, super duper. Outside of that, this is evidence of people that have just lost their ever-loving minds. And they, there's, it's, they, they're they FOMOing in and then people panic sell. And there we go. There is clear evidence humans are behaving the same as last time. And so, uh, like to me, this isn't some terrible, scary thing, Okay. I'm here because the volatility represents opportunity. If there weren't volatility, I wouldn't be interested in this. Think about that. If, if there were no volatility, why would you put, to, I mean, unless you legitimately want to store value, but like outside of that, why would you do that? If, if a price was guaranteed to not move when you put it in, outside of you wanting store value, why would you do that? You wouldn't, right? Of course. We're here because there's volatility. The reason that there's extreme volatility is because there's illiquid markets. Uh, this is the, the smallest asset class on the planet and supremely illiquid cryptocurrencies. Um, and, and, and there's just a frenzy around it. And so there's so much volatility. That's what makes the opportunity possible. This is desirable to me. And so I'm waiting for this damn bubble to inflate. I'm waiting for the XRP bubble to go up there. I've been counting on it for years. This is not some scary bad thing. This isn't a way to talk crap about XRP or any cryptocurrency. XRP is my favorite cryptocurrency. It's my largest holding. Technologically, it's incredible. It's superior to, depending on what your use case is, it's just about any other crypto on the planet. It's not, uh, you know, you can't do everything, of course. Uh, because there's different technical attributes than some that have native smart contract. There's all sorts of ways... That it, that it could be better or worse based on what the application is. But I'm just saying it, it is technologically incredible, right? Uh, but like, so what? In the Like right now, I mean, I care. Fine, maybe you care. But the speculators are just going to FOMO in all this stuff. It just doesn't matter. So ultimately, what do you think is going to happen? It's going to inflate again. It's going to be really super exciting. And then it's going to crash. And what's what happens when it crashes? Well, uh, I'm going to sell hopefully on the way up only uh, if I if I accidentally overshoot and I uh, maybe I'll sell some on the way down. OK, fine. I hope that doesn't happen. Maybe it will. Um, this is not going to be perfect execution here. It'll be, be a little sloppy for me. I, I'm expecting anyway. Uh, and then I'm going to hold off on buying until we see um, massive discounts. Once we see that the market's down about 80 percent from its high. Uh, something like that, then I'm going to get really interested in purchasing a uh, crypto again. And I'm going to do so. What I've been doing the last three and a half years to this point, which is how long I've been in crypto, uh, once the bubble pops, I'm going to do that again. And I think there's going to be an incredible amount of opportunity. And we'll have to watch and watch for differences because who knows, maybe, maybe this is a maybe uh, that it's it's the case that uh, people will begin sufficiently parsing out the differences between cryptocurrencies, in which case not everything will, will parabolically go up. Uh, I don't know if that's the case, though. If we don't have clear usage of cryptocurrencies, maybe people will act as completely irrational as they have a uh, last market cycle and this market cycle to this point, which, which is fun. Like, to me, that's an easier thing to navigate. It's known waters. We know how people act just stupid in crypto. So if there aren't a bunch of clear winners, maybe we'll be fortunate enough to see that because uh, it, it Every single large and mid-cap coin, and I do mean literally every single one, went parabolic last market cycle. So I'm expecting that to happen again. So, look, bear markets are when the fortunes are made, though. Because I know it's it's not as fun and as, as exciting. I got that. 
But planning during the bear markets, I believe, is what creates the, the, the most wealth for people uh, down the road. Because these are discounted prices and you're, you're, you're then accumulating uh, assets that were, aren't, they just, they aren't as desirable at that part of the market cycle. You get them at great discounts. Uh, but then once the attention come back, it comes back around and the market cycle sh shoots up to the upside, if you did the planning during the bear market, yeah. Because think about it. All, look at it. Think about how many people weren't paying attention until the last like three, four, five, six months. And maybe that's you. Maybe you're new. And nothing against you if, if you are one of those people. And in fact, I say welcome to the party. Have fun. Be safe. Uh, but think about how many people are here new. The people that were planning all the time before that, if they invested uh, wisely, uh, and it's I think it's hard to make a wrong choice if you're just here to you know ride ride waves like th the time to do it was before that if you wanted the most ridiculous gains uh, so anyway i'm just saying there's there's going to continue to be opportunity here and i just want i just think it's a fun conversation so if you guys think i'm wrong that's fine uh, tell me i like a civil adult conversation i love diversity of thought i happen to feel pretty strongly about all this i've thoroughly thought through it i've looked at as much data as uh, i could reasonably find and uh, if you've got a, a case that's compelling that would indicate you think that i am wrong uh, I'd love to hear it. I do think it's fun to talk about this stuff. I don't get offended by ideas that are different than my own. Unless they're stupid. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll, I'll stop here. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Nambo.